G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. I'm actually a little bit under the weather today, so uh, bear with me whilst we get through this latest awesome news from Nikon. But before we jump into the latest Z9 firmware update, I want to talk about this little beauty here. And yes, this time it's true, I do actually have one. Here is the Z30 coming out later this month. There it is with the optional kit lens and the vlogging handle. Now, I've spent a little bit of time with this camera, not a lot. Uh, I will be coming out with a video shortly, but I am enjoying it a lot so far. And now that I have it in my hand, very much like the 400mm 4.5, now that I have it in my hand, it actually makes way more sense than just the specs on paper. Anyway, let's jump into the Z9 firmware update. <laughs> course there's no updates for anybody else and I completely understand that people would like to think that all cameras could kind of continuously have firmware updates now don't get me wrong I understand there hasn't been very many for say the Z62 and the Z72 like there has been for the Z6 and the Z7 I get it and I'm not here to answer for Nikon. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know whether there's any more that can be gotten out of these cameras or not. But what I can say is that the Z9 is the flagship and we know it's based on the new processor. And we know cameras like the mythical Z8 or perhaps the Z63 and the Z73, well, they will probably have this new processor as well. So what I can see here is Nikon is absolutely refining the firmware that goes with this processor and everything that's going on now will be much more applicable to these new cameras that have the new processor, the XP7, instead of the XP6. Look, it does make sense to me that Nikon are throwing a lot of energy into the Z9. It feels like it's just the Z9, but I would actually theorize and conject it's the Z9 plus whatever mid to high end cameras are coming next. Obviously, it doesn't include the Z30. That not being mid or high, this is absolutely entry level. So let's talk about the 2.1 update that's come something like three months after the 2.0 update. Now the 2.0 update was absolutely epic and it was almost like getting a new camera. This update is nothing like it, but it does have a couple of super important features, which I think is Nikon looking at the pain points that some people have and addressing those specifically. And they do make a statement in their press release, which is they're going to respond to customers' needs as quickly as they can. Now, this is a moving forward scenario. So again, not applicable to the older processors and the older cameras. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that that older processor, it simply does not have the wriggle room that the new one has. And of course that makes sense because it's new and the other one's old. So exciting feature number one is to me the high frequency flicker reduction. The ability to be able to change the shutter in 1 96th. Now that's immense. And that's between a shutter speed of I think 1 32nd, sorry, all the way up to 1 2000th. And then from 1 2000th up until 1 8000th, I believe we get 1 16th increments. Something like that. Below a 30th of a second, flickering is not really an issue. And then above 8,000th, well, flickering is usually happening with artificial light. And we're not usually, not usually, it would be very uncommon to be shooting not under sunlight, but with artificial light at exposures above 1 8,000th. It's ridiculously fast. You need a lot of light for that. Even with my 50mm 1.2 at ISO, I don't know, 12,800, I think I'd be struggling to get up there and be using artificial light. 
So that to me is uh, absolutely a 10 pole feature of 2.1. The next feature is just continued improvements in the autofocus system, general improvements, including AFC improvements. And I think the 10 pole AFC feature here is the fact that the autofocus system sees even smaller subjects in the frame. So again, that's great for wildlife and birders. I presume it works for portraiture as well. Interestingly, the camera, I believe the Z9 is one of the best at seeing faces at quite a distance. Something that uh, Joe and I theorized is that the camera was better at seeing humans at a distance than it was at seeing, say, birds at a distance. And we did theorize that this was something that could be improved just through more deep learning. And we believe that that algorithm, those algorithms can just continue to be improved continuously, ongoingly. Thus, this may very well be an example of that. For Z9 users, this is very exciting news for everyone else. I understand if you're wanting and waiting for an update, it's disappointing. Who knows what we're going to see for the, especially the Z6 II and the Z7 II. They are the cameras that uh, Nikon users are most crying out for. I've already seen statements that Nikon don't support their customers. Well, a blanket statement like that is just simply incorrect. They're clearly supporting their Z9 customers and they have put out firmware updates for every single Z camera, including the Z6 II and the Z7 II, just a few months back. It wasn't the update you wanted, but Nikon are continuing to support those cameras, just in not the way that some people want. And then for the rest of us that aren't, don't live our lives based around focus tracking and high-speed focus and perhaps birding, well, the Z6 II and the Z7 II work admirably. They work fantastically. Like, I saw a comment where someone said their Z6 II or Z7 II only works in sunny conditions. Well, I've used both of these cameras at nighttime events, having zero problems with autofocus. So I would gently and warmly suggest to people, sometimes it might just be simply about how you use your camera and do you have it set up the right way? There's so many things we can do to ensure our cameras get focus. And are you doing everything or, you, or are you literally just going full auto and hoping that the settings out of the box are gonna work in every situation? I don't know, but it just seems strange to me that uh, people's, people's mileage on the autofocus system on the Z6, the Z6 II, the Z7, it seems to vary so much. There's, there's quite a few autofocus fixes in this update, including when doing portraiture, it's even more accurate. And I have to say, I've done portraiture and I've had no problems with accuracy. So that's an interesting, a surprising one to me. Also in various other focus modes, there is an improvement with the camera not focusing on the background, but obviously focusing on whatever's in the foreground. So that's awesome. Again, I mean, this is something that cameras, they all dance around a bit, and I suppose anything that's improving that is great. It hasn't been particularly, again, particularly glaring from, glaringly different for me with the Z9. And one I am super excited about is an improvement in vibration reduction when panning. So I'm doing a lot of video. I absolutely love the Z9 for video. I'm shooting in 8K pretty much all the time because I just love punching in and being able to move around the frame. Essentially, it's like you're getting not two shots, but kind of uh, not an endless number of shots, but quite a lot of different frames within the one frame. So the fact that they've improved VR in panning shots, I'm super excited about that as well. You can find a link to this firmware update in the notes below. Anyway, this is an exciting update for Z9 users. Hopefully there will be more firmware coming for some of the other Z cameras. Fingers crossed, who knows? I'd love to know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. Please do let me know. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. And I've got to go and have more headache tablets, all right? I'll see you later.